welcome back. I'm going to show you the retire sedge to drive high pattern created by good friend Davy Parker. Now there is a bit of a story behind the fly as to why it's named the retire and how it was originally created. Slightly too long for a YouTube video and a tie-in, but I will give the full story in the description and give Davy the credit of creating such a great pattern. Now I also like to use them with an orange sighter. This is just a orange ultra yarn from John Tyzak's Fish On Productions. I like to use the one with the orange tag on in the last I broke in water. It helps us keep an eye on it. Now I like to tie these on. Uh, TMGO 113 BLH. And I fish these from a 12 to a 16. Now for the thread is grey brown UTC. Trusted 70 denier. So I'll lay a layer of thread on the shank. Just trim away that little bit. Now for the tail. I like to use just white polypropylene or aero wing as we know it. So I'll take a small section away. Just give it a little roll in your finger. It breaks up just the square edge you've just cut. So for the tail it'll go slightly shorter than the shank length. So I'll, I'll probably cut it once I get tying. Just to make sure everything balances up the way I want to tie it. Mm, missed a few bits. Happy with that. That's pretty good. Now for the body, I like to use Snowshoe Rabbit's Foot. This is a natural colour. I know they've labelled it Hazier. It's a good mix of under fur and guard hair from the foot. And being naturally buoyant helps the fly as long as the, the, the rest of the components of the pattern and just generous pinch and slide that up and just keep it twisted as you go and just helps you apply it now as you create the body just keep the dubbing nice and even and then give yourself maybe two or three mil behind the eye because you've got an underwing and some deer hair in the head to go on Come on with your velcro on a stick without catching your thread and just tease some of the fibers out. So, okay. so for the underwing, I've got another piece of polypropylene. So we'll just tie that in and line it up with the end of the tail there, a couple of turns just to keep it on top of the shank, yes. Probably make your scissors and take that away. I'll just tidy everything up as we go. Now for the wing itself, just check some cheese wax on the string. I like to use for the ones without the sight are just all purpose deer hair from nature spirit. I'll just grab it and show you. Nice dark uh, colour to the, uh, the main patch itself. Nice light tips. I don't stack it like more of a, a feathered edge. So I'll take a good pinch and trim away with the scissors. So I've got about, I'd say about that many, that's probably a good 30 or so. You see there's a couple of stray ones not quite behaving and staying in line. So I'll throw in another one there. All I can see on the camera. So I'll just take them away from that one. I'll just offer your wing up and ideally get it to sit just slightly longer than the polypropylene underwing. So take your thread, and there's one, two, and apply your pressure, pulling up over, stops the, the deer hair spinning, just tighten that in, and keep a hold of it, just come in with your scissors, 
Make a few cuts to get rid of the stuff we don't want. Stalk butt ends, whatever you'd like to call them. Without cutting your thread, especially on a video, it's not ideal. So we'll just, there we go. Keep everything nice and tight. Bring your thread to the front, just tidy up all the loose ends. there we'll get rid of you keep everything nice and tight the wings splayed a bit we'll keep an eye on it so as you can see the wings kind of sat quite vertical almost now little tip I've learned just grab your wing just grab it where it's tight behind where it's tied in and force it forward and you'll get a nice 90 degree bend in it. You can also put them inside a pen lid. It's a little tip another friend, Stevie Cullen, showed me. If you want them to sit, it's still not sitting. So I'll give it a good squeeze just to. There we go. You can see it sits a bit more horizontal, a lot neater. So just tidy this up where I'm going to tie the head in. Now, for the head, you can either Dub squirrel on it. Here's your CDC, CDC hackle. I like to come in, just split the thread. I'm just using my whip finish tool here. Just keep your finger inside the loop. Take a pinch if you can get a hold of it. With the snowshoe again. And just slide it in. Probably do with a little bit more there. Just slide another pinch of double in. And what I'll do is just slide that up. Just to make it easier and a bit neater when you're tying. You know, it's like to cut one straight edge without cutting the thread. Now just spin your thread. You will lose a couple of fibres because it's just been a pinch of dubbin just thrown in. So that's that. Do all the idea here and make sure it stays on top. So there's one. Just stroke that back. Two. Easier. Yeah. Three. The fourth, and we'll squeeze a fifth in there. Just take your thumbnail if it's crowding the eye and just keep everything nice and compact. It's probably going to be too much, so we'll get rid of that. Get rid of all the fluff there. Now you can see when adding the head, it's made the, the wings sit nice and horizontal. So there's two. Take a dubbing needle and take just a splash of varnish and just add that directly to your thread. Just come in with your whip finish. One, two, three, and done. Slightly crowded the eye a bit, so again I'll just bring my finger and thumbnail in and tidy up. There we go. Now Davy's top tip for the flies created. As you can see you've got a nice I'll just show that on camera. Nice profile from above and below. As you can see, Davy's top tip is not to apply too much gink or gel floating or whatever you'd like to use. I like to tie these in batches of fours or six. What I do is I'll dunk them in silica muslin. Um top comes off should be able to show you without spilling it all there's a hole in there which allows the liquid to pass through so put your flies in the top chuck it in give it a shake 
pick them out. Uh, I would advise you to wash your hands afterwards. Leave them on a kitchen roll and that will dry overnight and you'll find they'll float like corks for a, quite a few fish. Just take a little bit of dressing. Uh, again, you can bring them home, dry them out, redress them. They'll float again, not a problem. Hope you've liked the tying of the retirer. It's a very effective pattern for grayling and brown trout. Do hope you're enjoying the videos. If you haven't subscribed, there is a icon in the corner. Uh, and if you press the bell icon, you will get notifications. Thank you to all who've subscribed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.